Today I have the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. This drone encountered a rough landing, leading to some issues with the gimbal motors and camera feed. Strangely, unlike the original Mavic Pro, this one does not give a gimbal motor overload error. This will be a very difficult tutorial to make as well since we'll be working in three dimensions rather than two like on a phone. I'm going to be using a 1.5mm hex driver to remove the screws on either side of the plastic air baffle. A lot of these screws are different sizes but share the same driver. Be sure to keep a screw map. Two more screws inside the gimbal housing need to be removed as well. The air baffle can then be pulled forward to release it from the groove it sits in. Then two plastic pegs on either side keep it held in. They can be pulled outward from either side to remove the piece. Under the baffle you'll find two more hex screws that secure the back of the gimbal to the drone. A single Lego style connector to my left needs to be disconnected. The gimbal assembly can then be lifted from the bottom and slid out from the groove at the top. At the top of the assembly we find the gimbal control board. An aluminum shield holds the main ribbon secured against all the vibrations it endures during flight. It has two screws that need to be removed. It can then be disconnected and set to the side. The yellow plate at the top doubles as a heat sink. It's secured with clips along the edges and can be carefully pried off. There's a ton of blue thermal paste under this shield. Lifting slowly can keep it from spreading. The camera transmission harness needs to be disconnected very carefully here. This bundle of tiny wires is very easy to rip and is actually the source of our issue here. Four screws secure the control board to the shock mount. The camera harness then needs to be threaded through the hole in the control board while lifting from the front. The yaw motor has an incredibly short Lego connector hidden at the back. This one is super fun to reconnect, and by fun I mean not fun. Three more screws secure the actual gimbal to the shock mount. The transmission harness again needs to be carefully threaded through the hole. Now to the camera module on the gimbal itself. The back panel is held in with four Phillips screws. Again, I hope you're keeping a good screw map because this is going to get pretty wild. Under that plate is more of DJI's infamous blue thermal paste. Careful not to smear it everywhere. Here's the other end of that camera transmission wire. Unlike the previous Mavic Pro, this one is threaded entirely through the arms of the gimbal. On the front of the camera is the built-in filter that needs to be twisted slightly, then pulled off. Under that are the glare-resistant bellows. This is held in with some white silicone. Under that, we'll encounter three Phillips screws that hold the internals of the camera inside. These are completely packed with white silicone and very difficult to get a driver into. Now the camera module can be pulled out from the back and set safely to the side. This is the most expensive component in the drone, so treat it as such. On either side of the camera housing, there's a plastic circle covering the pitch motor and wire channel. These have sturdy adhesive, but an X-Acto knife was able to pry them up pretty easily. Ideally, you should feed the camera harness through the hole first and then remove the three screws that hold this aluminum puzzle piece together, but I wasn't that smart. On the opposite side, there are three more screws that hold the pitch motor in place. Back to the puzzle piece side, there are three more screws that can be accessed through the hole in the arm by rotating the camera housing accordingly. How's that screw map looking? This extra thick washer can then slide out and be set near what I'm officially calling the puzzle piece. This is nearly impossible to show on camera, but a large U-shaped plastic panel covers the inside of the arms and needs to be popped out from either side to reveal the wiring below. The roll motor has a short ribbon with a Lego connection that needs to be disconnected here before the camera housing is removed. Inside the arms of the gimbal we find the source of the issue. This white Lego style connector was overextended at some point causing a few of the tiny wires to snap from the connector. Interestingly, the camera transmission wire seems to also provide power to the lower motors as well as to the camera itself. This plastic panel needs to also be popped off to access the harness. Up top is another of the plastic circles that needs to be removed. The rest of the signal wire can then be carefully fed through the yaw motor and finally threaded out through the roll motor. I'll start by carefully threading the new harness through the roll motor, then again through the arm leading up to the yaw motor so that it pokes out the top with a decent bit of slack on the line. I'm then going to carefully attach the white Lego connector before threading the rest of the length through the arm. The camera housing then needs to be lined up and the motor pressed into the arm, as well as connected to the power. I can then insert the extra thick washer and screw it in place. This acts as a spacer to keep the camera housing aligned. Again, I have incorrectly threaded the wire through the puzzle piece already, 
It's a bit easier if you were to insert the puzzle piece, tighten the screws, and then feed the wire through. My method worked, it just wasn't the best way. The puzzle piece is fully tightened in place, and over on the other side, the roll motor needs to be screwed in as well. Reinstalling the U-shaped cover is hard. I really have no tips on how to get it back in place other than to keep trying. If anybody knows an easier way, please let me know. Now the camera module itself can be inserted. The side with the camera connector is the side that faces the harness we routed through the arms. From here I'm just reassembling in reverse order starting with the three silicone packed screws in the front, then the four screws that hold the back plate to the camera housing. Not out of the woods just yet. The motor flex and camera harness need to be carefully routed through the shock mount starting with the motor flex. It has a tendency to get pinched and I really don't want to replace a motor today. Once aligned, there are just three screws that hold it together. The motor flex needs to be connected to the control board first, and this is also one of the hardest parts of the repair given how obnoxiously short the ribbon is. The transmission harness can be threaded through the board. Gently connect the harness to the control board and slip the yellow aluminum cover back over the top. Four screws will sandwich the board to the mount. The main ribbon that was set aside at the beginning is now reconnected, and the shield over top is screwed in with two screws. Back to the camera module, I'll get the bellows lined back up, and the filter clicked into place. I'll connect the main ribbon to the drone first, then slip the front into the top groove. Then push the back into the housing where it should click into place. I'll get those last six screws and air baffle installed, then it's finally time to test. The gimbal performs its wonderful happy little dance, assuring me that this repair went successfully. Time to get this one in the air. Thanks a ton for watching. If this video helped you out, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe for more repair videos coming soon, and I'll see you next time.